Hi everyone, welcome to Legally Yours. I am here again with the absolutely incredible David Valensky from Bowen Bookbinder Valensky. And in this interview, it's a slightly different episode for us, but I was so incredibly excited when I got to meet David um, at a conference last year at Vera Sage Symposium. And we actually were able to talk a little bit about value-based pricing and David's incredible journey um, with both himself in this field, but also with the firm. And, um, and so I wanted to get him on camera talking about it. So David, thank you for joining me. Pleasure, Karen. Okay, so now you actually were probably one of the first in Australia, the first lawyers in Australia to start talking about this and actually getting involved in it. So take me back, what year was it that when value-based pricing and this sort of fixed fee mantra came into your world? The where it started for, for, for me and therefore for my firm uh, was, um, you know, our firm was for many years a member of Law Australasia, which is a, a, an association of independent law firms. And they would have at their biennial conferences different speakers. One year, I think it was 2010, mm -hmm. I had the absolute privilege of being in a room with Ron Baker as this guest speaker. Mm. At the time, like everyone else, we were billing by the hour. It's the only way we really knew. Yes. Something about Ron Baker's presentation inspired me incredibly. It was almost like, you know, they show the shoe drop, the penny drop. There was a sort of epiphemous moment to me. I thought to myself, well, what he's talking about, about value pricing, is yeah. exactly what I'm experiencing. This guy's articulating the problems that I felt were inherent in the legal profession. Yes. And that is this billable hour model that we all are uh, slaves to just yeah. has to be suboptimum. There has to be a different way of doing it. And... It's something that the clients wanted. So the more I thought about this, um, I, I actually went and read Ron's book. I spoke to him. I went back. I was so, you know, enthused with this concept. Yes. Back to my firm, I said to my partners, because I was the only one that attended that conference. I said, look, I just heard something amazing. We really need to think about going down this path. And they kind of looked at me like I was nuts. <laughs> like what is this? Who's Rob Baker? You know, yes. Old figure that you just got sucked in, you know. Yes. Yes. So the little skeptical lawyer approach, you know, the the the, the negativity. Um, but I thought, well, this is a great challenge. So I said, look. So we spoke about it, and I said, look, why don't we do this? Why don't I get Ron Baker to come and talk to us, especially? Amazing. And they said, really. <laughs> How much is it going to cost? So it actually did cost us a, a few dollars. But yeah. of, long story short, I got Ron to fly from San Francisco to Perth. And I can tell you, that is one hell of a, hell of a journey. Yes. yes. He, flew, he flew to Perth. Uh, John Chisholm sort of accompanied him to Perth here. Yeah. Um, and he, we shut our firm down. We went to the Duxon Hotel just up the road. We hired a room. There must have been about 25, 26 of us. Every single person was there. The lawyers, the staff, the secretaries, the receptionists. I wanted complete buy-in. And I just knew that I could never convince them like Ron could. So okay. I told Ron, I said, look, I want you to tailor your presentation for our firm. I told him who the skeptics were in the room, who were yep. the people who needed to win over. And he was just masterful. He was absolutely, he, in fact, his presentation was even better than the first one I'd heard. And it, it, to the extent I wasn't already on board with this concept, I just, I fell in love with it. I thought, this is just, we just got yeah. to do this. And that generally was the feeling in the room. Yes. I did a wonderful job. But of course, implementation is another thing completely. Mm. You know, we yeah. were at the cutting edge of implementation and there's not a lot written about how to implement it. We needed to invent new stationery, new new everything, you know, yes. new schedules, new retainer agreements, Absolutely. have conversations with our clients. And honestly, the feedback from our clients was just absolutely overwhelming. They sort of mate, you know, why have you done this before? Absolutely. You know, this, it's it's we're just satisfying a niche in the marketplace, a big demand. Yeah, because I yeah. think that there's no doubt the demands is growing and growing, and I think about back, back and, eight, and eight it's, years ago. And it's just fascinating to me because a couple of things stand out there. So there's that instinct in you that went, 
this actually makes a lot of sense. And I have to say, I see it time and time and time again when I speak to lawyers about this. You know that it's resonating something inside you that goes, actually, this is not only is it a wonderful way to interact with your clients, but actually, this is really great for our firm. This is a great way to practice as a lawyer. And all of a sudden, it's no longer clock and minute focused. It's actually value focused, which, you know, as lawyers, that's what we do. We create and give value. So that absolutely so stands out. And I love the fact, David, that you knew that you had to get buy-in from everyone in your firm. So, you know, the fact that you got everyone together really on board, because I think that's one of the challenges I often hear is that sometimes in these law firms, you know, you might get one or two partners or, you know, a couple of converts that are really for it. But if you don't get an entire buy-in, because it's it's a complete change, it's a complete change on everything and, and how you do it. So could you, can you talk me through a little bit about those challenges with implementation? Because you really did have to write the book. Um, we, yeah. Yes. Well, you did write about about buy-in, uh, and and you know people that come talk to me, and I talk to a lot of people. I say, how did you manage to do this? Yes. I said the way I managed to do this was by getting everybody on on board. Yeah. And and I have to tell you that along the way, we've had lawyers in this firm that have joined our firm who haven't kind of embraced the concept. We what we do, we make very sure that when we recruit people, that they understand what we're doing here. Yes, uh, we've had a couple of people along the way that weren't on board, and they they just don't last in in a firm like ours. So they've left. Yes, the implementation was difficult, but you know once you committed, it's just a big challenge. You know we 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 made a lot of mistakes at the beginning of the yeah. process, uh, a lot of mistakes, and we pr- probably cost us money. Yeah. But I think you you when you're implementing change like this, this is massive change. It is, Huge yeah. Change. A complete departure from from the way things have always been done. I mean, our motto is we don't sell time. People say, "Well, then, how do you make a living? What do you what do you sell? How do you you know?" Because everybody thinks, "Well, lawyers just sell time. It's mm. so many hours and X dollars an hour equals, and that's the yeah. bill." You know? Yeah. Uh, and and what do you say, David, when they say, "If you don't sell time, what what are you selling? How do you make I money?" Say, I say to them, "What we are selling is we're selling our intellectual." Our intellectual capital. We're selling the the value that we can bring to your problem. Absolutely. How we can help you problem. And the one expression that I always use, yes. which is a very good one, and that is at the heart of of fixed fee pricing is a concept which really is, is simple. It's the disparity between price and value. And if you get a bill from a law firm on so many hours, you know the usual. I mean, mm. I've seen these these bills. We used to send these bills out. What yes. call the bill. You're always going to get pushback. You send a bill to a client at the end of the month, so many hours, all the things itemized, you know, $11,200. But absolutely nothing has often, nothing has been achieved. Um, Where's the, the value? Yep. There's, no, there's no value to the client. That's a disparity between price and value. Yep. And if you create the value up front, you say to a client, look, for this scope of work, this is going to cost you so much money. This is when I want it, it needs to be paid, and this is what you're going to get for. This is the scope of work. This is what you're going to get. Yeah. And we're going to try and add value. We're going to be efficient. They want. They say, where do we sign? Absolutely. The clients Absolutely. Absolutely. Love fixed fee pricing because it creates that commercial certainty. And Absolutely. People like certainty. It's not necessarily always cheaper, yes. but it's certainty it's the value it's the value proposition and that's really at the heart of it at the heart absolutely. of it absolutely and and then you can get on and have that trusted relationship with your client without having to have the toxic conversations on the well hold on you didn't tell me you were going to spend that phone call conversation and i was charging for that and it actually it creates these seamless more happy relationships with your clients which i love so just to end this conversation david would you turn back is there any small part of you that would turn back to billable hours not for one second. In fact, <laughs> I, w- I wish we started it sooner. I think if you look at the trends now, yeah. I do feel sorry for the big, the big firm, big law, as they call them. You know, big yeah. law. They do. never be able to change. They're too big. They're too yes. vested in billable time, yeah. billable hour. That's their model. You know, you, you're never going to get everybody on board. That's that's unlikely. So it's a smaller, medium-sized firms that are likely to be successfully doing fixed fee pricing. We're doing it really well now. Yeah. Uh, I'm 
very proud of the team, the, the people here. It's, a, it's part of our culture now, it's fixed fee yeah. pricing. Yeah. Uh, we have regular pricing committee meetings. We don't bill by the hour. There's no timesheet pressures, uh, six minute units. You know, the slowest horse doesn't win the race at Bowen for find the you know. Yeah, yeah. And so I imagine a sense to, of and I imagine a sense of internal collaboration as well, because right. everyone's working towards a certain goal, which is the value, not the amount of time related to performance. So there's this wonderful, I, I, yeah, wonderful culture that you've created. So um, can, I, can I just say I'm so honoured to have this conversation with you. You're an absolute pioneer in this space. Obviously, I'm everything about new law. I'm so passionate about fixed fee and value-based pricing that I created a whole platform about it. But you know, when, when, when I met you, I was just blown away. I mean, and I had read articles at the beginning of our journey from you um, and I'm just so honoured to talk to you and I would love to have you back to film some more episodes about this. But um, we will end it there. If this is resonating with you and you would love to connect with David, you can actually head to Bowen Bookbinder Valensky um, at www bbvlegal.com.au I managed to get that out um, and you can find out more there and you can also find David on our platform but um, thank you for joining me David yeah, and we'll could, I just, could I just end with one thing please? yes please do okay so one of the presentations Rod did he, he, he put up a quote from a famous this is a true quote from a famous United States general I forget his name but he said in relation to change, he said, if you don't like change, you're sure I'm not going to like irrelevance. Yes. And that's how I feel about it. Because I think that Absolutely. as time goes on, the firms that are not doing fixed fee pricing will largely become irrelevant over yeah. time. Absolutely. I love it. Well, thank you, David. And we will chat very soon. Talk soon. Thank you for yeah. watching too, everybody. Thank you.